Uh, a little bit about me, as, uh, as was introduced, uh, my name is Shwetank. I work in the developer relations team in Opera. How many people have uh, used Opera in the past? Or use it? Awesome. And the ones who don't, download it now. Um, I'm also part of the extensions team, so if you have any extensions and you want to put it to Opera or something, let me know. Uh, my Twitter is uh, Shwetank, just my first name. And if, uh, in case you want to talk to me later on on email, it's shwetanktee at opera.com. So first of all, welcome. Welcome to day two. Um, we'll have a lot of good talks in day two. And if you look at the talks in day two, you'll see that a lot of them are actually doing the same thing. They're diving deep into the topic, going a little bit extra ahead, uh, showing a little bit more detail. And the same thing will be in, in my talk as well. We'll talk about CSS blend modes. but more than that, we'll also talk a little bit about computer graphics and you know how and why we need blend modes in the first place, right? But first, I want to ask you a question: uh, What were your favorite cartoons when you were growing up? Tom and Jerry. Oh, let me let me just preface: How many of the people who were born before 1995, and this makes me feel very old, you know, what were your favorite cartoons? Swat cats. Dexter, oh nice, Johnny Quest. Almost all of those cartoons were probably using something like this. They were probably using something like traditional cell animation. And what exactly is this? Well, before this, you know, uh, and this is like way, way before, when, when animation was in a very, very primitive stage, you know, you used to draw each and every frame, you know, each and every frame you had to draw it because you had to flip through it, you know, each and every detail in each and every frame had to be the exact same thing. And it required a lot of effort, right? So then people came up with this, which was, you know, cell animation, which was you had tradition, uh, these uh, transparent uh, plastic cells, right? And you used to draw on top of that. So what happened was you know, whenever you had a frame or whenever you had an animation, there were some parts which were moving, like the characters, they were moving, right? But some parts were you know, not moving, like the background, right? So in those cases, you just painted one cell for the background, and then for each and every moving thing, you only animated that, right? The, and you only painted one cell for the background. So it little, looked a little bit like this, right? In which the moving parts, you paint for each and every cell on top, but, and, and when you compose it in front or, or at the back of a background, you have an effect like this. So the reason why I, I, I talked about this is because to introduce you to the concept of layers, layers is extremely important and it's a fundamental concept when you're talking about image composition and when you're talking about graphics in general, right? And this concept of layers and how we deal with different layers is at the heart of blending and composition, right? About modern graphics, once again, you have the same thing. How many people do you have used Photoshop or GIMP or any other image processing? And how many people have used layers in them? Everyone, right? Any, any kind of non-trivial thing they need to do uh, in all these image processing apps, you need to use some kind of layers and you know, mix and match and that kind of stuff. Over there, you might notice you know, there are options like this, you know, screen or something like this, right? These are the blend modes that we're going to talk about. And what do they do? I mean. For example, take a look at the poster at the very left, right? Uh, it's a little bit dark in the projector, but uh, basically you cannot get this effect with just having a, you know, a red background on top of a picture and decreasing the opacity. You, know, you can't really have that. You need to apply something more, right? And how you do this is what blending modes is all about. And we now have it in CSS. So uh, we as web developers now have the power that we previously only had in Photoshop or you know, other image editing software. So first let's talk about compositing because the spec is about compositing and blending. Right? So compositing is basically how to deal with you know, displaying overlapping objects. Right? Overall compositing, it deals with something called Porter Duff compositing and blending. Right? So we'll first take a small look a brief look at what Porter Duff compositing is. Now, Porter what? So Porter Duff compositing is actually named by, you know, it's based on a work, 
a very seminal paper by these two people, Thomas Porter and Tom Duff. These two people, uh, in the early 80s, they used to work for a very famous, iconic company called Lucasfilm, right? Uh, and they were working on you know, all, all kinds of uh, various things for digital graphics over there. And one of the things they did was come up with stuff like this. You know, um, it's called the Porter Duff Compositing Modes. Um, so basically, if two elements are overlapping, there are pretty much just four things you can do. One, you show uh, on that overlapping part, you don't show anything, right? Second, you show the source, which is the layer on top. The second, uh, the third is you show the layer on bottom. And the fourth is you have a mix of both the bottom and the top layer. Somehow, you do something over there. So the blend modes will work over there. So they have a bunch of uh, different ways to deal with uh, overlapping layers. But the ones that we are interested in specifically is something called source over. It's the most intuitive way to deal with uh, overlapping images. Like, for example, you have a piece of paper, and you have another piece of paper overlapping it. right? And you look from top, then you'll see the source you know, eclipsing the destination layer. right? The one on top eclipsing, eclipsing the, uh, the one on the bottom. Right? This is the default compositing mode uh, when it comes to blend modes and other things. So this was about compositing, but what do we actually mean by blending? Blending is simply blending the colors of, this, you know, of the layer on top with the layer on bottom in some way or the other. So there's some calculation happening or some function or some algorithm happening through which uh, you blend the colors from the top layer and the bottom layer when th those two are overlapping to create some kind of effect. Right? For example, you have this layer, and then you, get, you have uh, the green uh, layer overlapping it. So in this portion, the yellow portion over here, something must be happening, some function must happen you know, to get an overall effect which is different. Right? Or another way to uh, deal with it is like this. On the top, you have the source image. On the bottom, you have the destination image. Right? And according to some function or the other, you get the resulting image, right? which is on the bottom. So when it comes to blend modes, we basically have uh, about 16 blend modes. And the, one in, the first one, normal, is pretty much just no blend mode is applied, actually. So it's pretty much just 15 blend modes that you have. In other image editing softwares, you have slightly more blend modes as well. And in CSS, you use it like this. This is the stuff that needs to be paid attention to, which is uh, mixed blend mode and background blend mode. And we'll take a closer look over there. So with mixed blend mode, how you use it, you just say mixed blend mode multiply, or you know, if you're using it in a div, just say you know, in the div, mixed blend mode multiply. What will happen is, that if that div is overlapping something else, then the colors of that div will be mixed with the colors of that uh, background uh, layer in the overlapping portion. So to give you a, a brief demo of this, let me just uh, pull this out. So you have this, right? Uh, but this is actually two different images. Right? But when you combine them, or you overlap them, then you know, and you apply a blend mode, then certain, a different effect is applied. Right? And now all I've done is I've used mixed blend mode on the image. That's it, on the IMG element. Same thing with this. You know, it looks like a g small boy like looking through a glass like a window or something. It's actually two different images. You're just combining them together and applying some kind of effect. And this is just you know, very simple CSS. So this is what I mean by you know, mixed blend modes and how you apply them. I'll show you one more demo, which might be, it might work, might not work. I think it should work. Uh, let's go to the meta refresh site itself. We go over here. We have images over here, right, of the speakers. Let's just select one image over here. Let's apply mix blend mode. 
um, let's try hard light. Right? So you can see there's a different kind of effect applied to the to the image. You can do something else as well. You can do screen or uh, overlay or even multiply. Right? So using this, you can just have different effects on top of your existing images or on top of even other divs or any kind of block level elements. So this is pretty nice. How many people know about the stacking context in CSS? Uh, how many people have used uh, Z-index? Everyone. So everyone over here is created a stacking context of their own in the browser. So what a stacking context is, think of it as like a stack of books, right? Uh, every time you create a Z index, you create one stack of, one book on top of that stack as well, right? And uh, this is how different layers are, you know, interpreted in, in the browser itself. So this is a little bit like, this is not even a complete list, but you know, whenever you use Z-index, you create a stacking context. If you use opacity, you know, less than one, you get a stacking context. You know, transitions, flex item, filter, will change. How many people know about will change? So uh, there's a good article on devopera.com. Sarah Sweden has written it about will change. Check it out. Um, all these things will create a separate stacking context, right? A separate layer on top, right? So this turns out to be a little bit important when you're talking about blending. Uh, because we have a property called isolation, right? And what it does is, there are certain times in which uh, you use mixed blend modes, and it it will mix uh, all the layers which are you know overlapping it, right? All the layers which are beneath it, basically, right? But sometimes you want that I just want uh, certain few layers to for those colors to mix, but I don't want all of those underneath uh, 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 stacking context to be mixed, right? You just want a few certain things to be mixed. So in those cases, you can actually do it. This image is straight from the spec. So to take an example, uh, on the left, you have blending happening normally, right? In which uh, all of the background layers, the colors are mixed, right? On the right, what you have is, uh, I've, I, I've done div isolation isolate, in which only the elements required to make that plane only the elements of those are mixed. On, you know, only the colors of the elements of those are mixed, and not the background color, right? So in some certain cases, you want isolation to happen, and you can create a container div and say isolation isolate. In those cases, only the child elements of that container div, those will be mixed together, not the entire thing. Right? The thing. Uh, uh, after mixed blend modes, you also have background blend mode. So um, a lot of times you have background images, right? And you want to add extra style to it, extra pizzazz to it. In those cases, you can actually use background blend mode. So you can define a background image over here. You can def define a background color. And you, know, you can define background blend mode, multiply or screen or whatever. And in those cases, it'll mix the background image with the background color to create something. You know, to create a certain effect. Now, keep in mind this is also isolated, which means that if there's, uh, say, a div or if if there's even a body with a certain background color behind it, you know, the uh, mixing will not, will not happen with those layers. It will only happen with within this particular div or whatever thing you're having. Okay? You can also have uh, multiple background images, right? So, and you can have multiple. Uh, blend modes for those multiple background images. So you can, in this case, you know, sample1.png will have the screen blend mode applied to it, and sample2.png will have the overlay blend mode applied to it. Right? Now, this is all good and fine, but when it comes to actually understanding blend modes, you know, a lot of people who are really, really good at CSS, even then, they kind of struggle with how to make sense of it. Right? Um, but there are ways to actually make sense of it. You don't have to always do trial and error. Certain amount of trial and error is always going to be required, but you cannot, there are ways to actually make sense of it a little bit more. So blend modes, the ones in CSS, uh, they can be categorized according to these five categories. Right? 
darkening, lightening, contrast, comparative, and component. Right? And we'll take a look at one blend mode in detail from each of those categories. Right? So before I start that, a um, little bit about RGBA notation. So when it comes to RGB, like there are di way, different notations to define or you know, to specify them. The most common is you know, digital 8-bit, 0 to 255, right? Uh, but you can also define them in, say, percentages, you know, 80%, 0%, 80%, something like this, right? And when it comes to mathematical analysis or talking about algorithms or functions, then it's a little bit easier to do it in terms of 0 and 1, right? So instead of 80%, you say 0.8, right? So when we're talking and when we're going to analyze these blend modes in terms of, like, the functions, we're going to use the mathematical notation of the RGP values. So let's take a look at the first category, which was darkening, right? So in this case, we take a look at the blend mode called multiply. It's a very simple thing. It's just multiplying the color channel of the source with the background, right? That's it. But the thing to consider over here is the fact that we're taking a look at you know, the mathematical RGB notation, which is between 0 and 1, right? So whenever you multiply a fraction with another fraction, you will get a number which is lower than the original ones, right? So in this case, the, a number which is closer to 0 is darker, and a number which is closer to 1 will always be lighter. So whenever you multiply 0 point something with 0 point something, you always get something closer you know, to, to 0. So in this case, you always get something which is a little bit darker, right? So that's why it's in the darkening category. Screen does a little bit of the opposite. So in this case, it, it takes the comp uh, complements of those and multiplies them together, and once again does the complement of it. The result is you get something closer to 1, right? And it creates more of a lighter, more of a washed out kind of a look, which sometimes you, you kind of desire. So this is, this is how you take a look at, at, the, at the lightning category, in, in this case, screen. Now this is very, very, very uh, interesting. This is, the, uh, hard light belongs to the contrast category. So in this case, what, is, what is, uh, it's saying is, if the color, if the source color is dark, which is, you know, a 0.5 or less, then use the multiply blend mode. Otherwise, use the screen blend mode. Multiply makes things darker. Screen makes things lighter. So in this case, what's happening is, if, if the source color is, you know, dark, it'll make it darker. If it's light, it's going to make it lighter. Right, so this is very very interesting. It's, it, the effect that you get is something like uh, if you have a big spotlight on someone, and you know you, certain things will you know appear a little bit washed out, and certain shadows and stuff will appear extra dark. The next category, one of those is difference. This is very simple. You know, it basically subtracts the darker of the two colors and create you know an amod of it and whatever the difference is, that's going to be the, the final color value of that channel. Now, the interesting thing about the difference color blend mode is that if your backdrop is black, then no effect will be applied because, you know, when you subtract something, zero from something, you still get that original number, right? So no effect will be applied at that time. However, if the background is closer to white or white, then you know it'll be like a invert of that image. So it'll be almost like a negative of that image, right? And hue, hue, sat hue, color, uh, luminosity, all those kind of uh, blend modes they they come come under the category of non-separable blend modes, which means that they don't work exactly on the RGB values. The RGB values have to be converted into HSL values, right? And it works over there. So in this case, in the hue blend mode, what happens is it creates a color with the hue of the source color and the saturation and luminosity values of the background color. Right? So it works over there like this. So luminosity, you know, it does the same thing with luminosity and stuff like this. So this is how you kind of can make sense of blend modes. You can take a look at how they work. And you can see that, OK, hmm, my image or my div, you know, the background is this, the, the foreground is this, so I probably will need to use something with high contrast, I'll go with hard light, you know. You ca so you can kind of make sense and have an idea of where you want to go with blend modes. Now, blend modes can work with other technologies as well. That's the power of the web, right? 
that you can mix and match different technologies to create some really, really cool stuff. So uh, the, one of the most exciting things for me is that you can use blend modes with gradients to create something really nice. So for example, this is just a normal radial gradient, right? And then you have, and keep in mind, this is not, this is a white to black one, not a transparent to black one, right? And then you have another image over here, but if you overlap them and apply a blend mode, you can have an effect like this, you know, which, is, which cannot really be achieved with anything else. So, and this can be used in image galleries and all kind of stuff like this. So, you know, in terms of, uh, in terms of practical uses, you know, it's very, very nice that you can use gradients with blend modes uh, on images. Uh, it's a little bit out of the scope, but uh, uh, so I won't explain what exactly are masks and animation filters, but you can use all of those things, you know, to create something really, really nice. In terms of CSS masks, uh, if you're using them, if you know them, uh, keep in mind that the mask will be the higher, highest layer in the stacking context. So, for example, if you have these three images, right, and you want to create something with just these three images, which looks a little bit nice, just using normal, simple CSS masks and animations and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, let's go over here and try to see what a simple thing that I made. So, you can make something like this in which... Uh, the, C the mask is the Batman image, uh, the Batman symbol. It's doing a CSS transition, right, animation. And uh, if you hover over it, then you get this text. And this text is using blend modes, right? So it's blending with the background, not just Batman, but also the Joker image, you know, behind it. So, and all I did was pretty much just with these three images. So you can combine and mix and match all these kind of things to, to create some really cool stuff. Animated, animated GIFs, so, or GIFs. I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, I pronounce it GIFs sometimes, and sometimes it goes ahead and I say it GIFs. So anyways, um, so in those cases, you can actually combine them as well. Because if you can combine JPG images together using background blend modes or PNG, uh, then, you know, GIF images are also game, right? So in, those, in this case, I can actually use this three-line code to make something like this. Uh, let's just go over here. You know, if you saw this image, you know, and, I, and you didn't saw the previous two GIFs, then you would probably expect that this is one single GIF. You know, instead, of, these are just two different GIFs that I've combined together using blend modes, using just three lines of CSS. You know, no JavaScript, nothing else. No image editing software required, just three lines of CSS. You know? I'll talk about that. Um, so the next thing is that, the next step is, let's, if you can do it with GIFs, can you do it with videos? And of course you can. You can do it with videos as well. Uh, but the thing which I find really cool is that you can also do it with real-time video. How many people over here have uh, worked or played with Get User Media? Or WebRTC or whatever? A few of you, right? So with Get User Media, with, your, with Get User Media, you can actually get the webcam input, right? So over here in real-time, let's see. In, here in real time, I can apply a mask and then I can apply a blend mode over here. All of this is working in real time. So using Photoshop or something, you can only do it with images, but with the power of the web, you can actually do it with live video. So this is pretty cool. Right, uh, let's go back. Of course, you can also use blend modes in Canvas. You're not just restricted to, you know, uh, HTML or, you know, just, uh, just in CSS. You can use it in Canvas as well. There's a particular thing called the global composite operation, right? And it takes as a value, it takes either a composite operation like source over or destination over or something, or you can put in a, uh, a blend mode. For example, over here, uh, you can say, context.global composite operation, 
is equal to screen. So the screen blend mode will be applied over there. Right? Blend modes can also be used in SVG, which is kind of like coming full circle, circle because you know, blend modes actually started out in SVG. SVG had blend modes all the time. So if, even if you don't use CSS in SVG, you can use blend modes by using FE image and FE blend over there. But if you want to use CSS, you can in SVG. So in this case, I've just selected the rectangle element and said mix blend mode multiply, and the blend mode will be applied over there. Actually, I'm going really fast, so that's pretty nice. Um, browser support. So browser support, wh when I actually started researching and doing stuff on blend modes like a year ago, uh, browser support was actually not very good. But now, browser support is pretty nice. Uh, Opera, uh, all the latest versions I'm talking about, the latest stable versions, Opera, Chrome, Firefox do support blend modes. Uh, when it comes to Safari, Safari also supports blend modes, but not all of them. Uh, the non-separable blend modes that I was talking about, in which the RGB values have to be converted to HSL, right? those ones right now are not supported by Safari yet. Right? Uh, when it comes to IE, IE doesn't support blend modes right now. Um, but uh, the Spartan project, which Microsoft is working on, Adobe has contributed you know, a lot of stuff over there, including uh, compositing and blending. Right? So whatever the start, whenever the Spartan project comes out, it will have support for blend modes over there. Now, of course, the beauty with blend modes is the fact that you know, it degrades very, very nicely because it's just extra sugar on top, right? If, if you remove the blend modes, you'll still have the image with you, you know, or you still have the div with you. This is just extra styling on top, right? So it degrades very, very nicely. It's not like your content will not be there if you don't use blend modes. It's just that if it is there, it'll look extra nice. So when it comes to feature detection, uh, there are multiple ways to do it. You know, in JavaScript, you can do you know, CSS.supports and check for that property over there. Right? Uh, using CSS, you can use the add supports property, say you know, add supports, mix blend mode screen, or you know, background blend mode screen over there. Uh, you can also use modernizer, which I do in some of my demos. <clears throat> so you can use the test prop function over there. So it'll return true if it's supported, return false if it's not supported. Uh, you can use the test prop function for a lot of stuff, not just you know detecting blend modes. So yeah, I think I've finished early actually. Uh, to recap, uh, we've taken a look at compos uh, composting, we've taken a look at blending, uh, we've taken a look at categorizing different blend modes. You know, uh, we took take a, took a look at you know the mathematical notation for RGB, uh, you know the algorithms of certain blend modes. Uh, we talked about mixed blend mode, background blend modes, stacking context, the isolation, you know, working with different web technologies as well, browser support and feature detection we talked about right now. Uh, and also we had a kick-ass animation or kick-ass animated GIF of Snoop Dogg dancing. So uh, we have that as well. Or in case you're a little bit more Indian flavored, we have uh, Sunny Paji over here. Uh, anyways, um, further reading. Uh, of course, take a look at the spec. The spec is something which you always have to take a look at whenever you want to go deep into a particular topic, especially in CSS. Uh, take a look at the various algorithms uh, or the various functions which are being used over there, not just for blending, but also for compositing. Right? Um, there's also a, uh, an article written by me uh, on dev.opera.com, uh, getting to know CSS blend modes. I talked about a lot of stuff uh, you know, uh, that I've talked about over here, even though I've talked a little bit more in detail over here. Uh, there's a guy called Bennett Feely, which has also done a lot of work in, you know, kind of like evangelizing blend modes. And of course, there's an article by Sarah Sweden, which also goes very in depth into, you know, composting and bl uh, blending. So take a look at all those things. Uh, if you have any questions regarding blending, composting, or how to use this in CSS, browser support, and all that kind of stuff, I'm here. Cheers. Hello. I'm considering three different types of content, one being raster images, which is JPEG, PNG, and GIF, the other being SVG kind of vector images, and the third being video and live video. Do you have any information or data around the performance impact 
uh, of using blend modes on all the three of these? It does use quite a lot of the GPU. So especially on mobile right now, the performance is lagging, especially in Firefox for some reason. Uh, but this is being worked on, you know, uh, by the browser makers right now. Uh, especially, I can say, you know, uh, we're taking a look at also memory optimization and that kind of stuff. So it is going to. Be, we know that uh, it is a little bit intensive, right? Um, but at the same time, you know, if if you if you have that kind of thing that you know, I want a particular effect applied. Just I think it's worth the effort to actually go, especially if you're not doing real-time video and that kind of stuff. If it's just a static image. I think it's okay if you don't overuse it. Okay. Thank you. Hi. First of all, thanks for the wonderful talk. Uh, I do have a question. So you explained about the different blend modes, right? So say I use one of the blend mode and it matches as close to my design, but it's not the exact one. So can I apply some more CSS parameters like uh, like opacity? We apply some values, right? Is there anything that I can do? Instead of just saying blend mode, I can apply some more number so that I can fine tune it. Is that possible? Yes and no. Uh, you cannot change the actual uh, function of the blend mode. What you can do is apply certain effects on top. Like you can add, a, like for example, filters or something on top. Or you can use uh, opacity to tweak it a little bit. Right? So you can do those things on top. But you cannot change the actual functions being used for a particular blend mode. You can't do that. Okay, thank you.